This week saw the launch of a not-for-profit organisation which is said to be dedicated to the understanding and enhancement of lesbian lives in the UK. The Lesbian Project is the brainchild of tennis great Martina Navratilova, former university lecturer Kathleen Stock and feminist campaigner and writer Julie Bindle. And I'm delighted to say Julie's here with me now. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So, the Lesbian Project, what's the genesis of this? Why did it start? What were you thinking? Well, I was thinking a couple of years ago, why is it that the word lesbian and gay, or the terms lesbian and gay, have become all one word. And then, of course, we'd been subsumed within what has been known as more like a unbreakable Wi-Fi code than <laughs> a useful acronym of LGBTQQIA+. Nobody you have two-spirit, two S as well, isn't Two-spirit. Yes, exactly. And, and nobody knows what the extra Q is. Nobody cares, quite frankly. And I thought to myself, well, you know, when I came out as a lesbian in the 1970s, it was a, it was a dirty word. Mm. It was a word that I had to get used to saying. I would call myself gay or say I was bisexual because lesbian was really terrible. There were no good role models at all for lesbians. There were some for gay men that weren't exactly positive, but they were not grotesque. Yes. So we were portrayed as sexual predators, butchers hell, um, so butch you could donate to a sperm bank. I mean, really yeah. grim stuff. And, and now where, where are we? Where is there, there's more pressure from young women, uh, or rather on young women, to identify as queer, which is their choice. But women have told me that they like the word lesbian, but they've been told in their university LGBTQQIA plus groups, usually headed by some man, that, that the word lesbian is so last season. That's really interesting that that's now become either a dirty word again or mm -hmm. unfashionable in some way, because that long acronym, whatever we want to call it, LGBTQIA plus or whatever, some of the stats coming out of, for instance, America are suggesting that a, a significant proportion, something up to 40% of young mm. people are identifying into that category. Yes. Most of them statistically must be straight. That's right. And so the problem that I have as a lesbian isn't that other people want to identify as queer, as asexual, as sapiosexual, as aromantic, as all of those other ridiculous, quite frankly, um, groups that suggest that they have some kind of oppression. Yes. I mean, for example, um, Ruth Hunt from Stonewall took time some, some years ago when she was still director to say that there were groups that weren't being best served um, within the Rainbow Coalition and pointed out asexuals and aromantics. Well, who, who loses their flat? Who loses their family for not actually wanting to fall in love, for example? <laughs> but but what, what was happening with young women being told that lesbian was a dirty word, was that they were, of course, therefore, identifying out of that category. Mm. And when we have research sh such as that that you've cited, where 40% of all um, people in a particular age group say that they're part of this big rainbow coalition, <clears throat> obviously, that doesn't mean that they're either lesbian or gay. It means that they can be straight people identifying as queer. So what we want to know and why I went to Kathleen Stark and then Martina Navratilova with the idea, which they were thrilled about, is where are the lesbians? What is the research about lesbian life, of which there's very little and hasn't been since the 1970s or 80s? What happens, for example, when we marry or divorce? What happens to our children when we come out as lesbians? What about inter-violent relationships? What about violence from external forces? In other words, anti-lesbian violence. You'll note that the term homophobia is used to cover us as well. Yes. And actually that means anti-gay violence. Mm. Where's the research on our employment opportunities, on discrimination, on our health? And we're women, so we can't possibly usefully be lumped in with gay men when it comes to those issues. So are you saying that the, uh, the uh, proliferation of these various identity groups has actually muddied the waters and made it harder for lesbians uh, to, to uh, uh, you know, work together and, and be activists? Yes. So. I absolutely support the right of anyone to have an identity, whatever they choose. I don't, as a lesbian, want to be lumped in with uh, minor attracted persons, no, map, which not. is the latest addition to this Rainbow Coalition, which means child abusers. Yes. Um, I don't want to be lumped in with heterosexual kinksters, in other words, men that like strangling women um, during sex. That isn't an oppression, that is not a sexual identity that has any meaning. So as a lesbian, what I want to know is how do we navigate our way through lives in a happy way, mm. in a way that's positive for us, and how do we come out? What happens to us when we come out? What about our health issues that's distinct from gay men and other groups without saying that we don't want 
those other groups to have their own research and have their own identity. And, that, and that's very interesting is because obviously the, the history of lesbianism involves a specific history of a certain type of oppression and it seems to trivialise it. If you bring in, I mean Stonewall did a thing about Aromantic Awareness Week, right? And an aromantic is someone who just doesn't like flowers on Valentine's Day or walks by the I river. must be aromantic. Right, OK. But that's not an oppressed group. They, it really you know, no isn't. No one's ever been you know, kick through the streets for being a romantic. Exactly. You know? And, you know, as, as a lesbian, I see very keenly and I support my gay brothers and I want to march alongside my gay brothers when there's legislation or issues that faces both, both mm. groups together. And I'll always do that. And I have many gay male friends, of course. And it's through talking to gay men that we understand that we have very different needs and lifestyle choices. And our health issues are very different. And, of course, we are coerced into heterosexual marriage way more than our gay men. Think about lesbians living within communities such as religious communities, working class communities such as the one that I was from, um, minority ethnic communities, where it's much harder to say, I'm a lesbian and I don't wish to marry a man and I don't wish to have children with men. Now, of course, for gay men that can be difficult, but there are very few gay men I know of that have been forced into or coerced into marriage. Yes. It's much easier for men to come out than it is for lesbians. And that's not to say we don't want it to be easier for gay men. Gay men have an oppression, it's called homophobia. But for lesbians, we are punishment raped, we are told that we are only lesbians because we're too ugly to rape. I mean, I can't tell you the number of times I've been told I'm only a lesbian because no man will have me. That I was thinking, I might as well form a rock band called Too Ugly to Rape. I mean, it's absolute misogyny, and that's what lesbians have to put up with on but, a but, daily basis. But they're also now having to put up with this new wave of, of uh, oppression coming from, the, from gender ideologues, because we've had Nancy Kelly say that women who don't want to sleep with individuals who have penises are akin to sexual racists. Well, you've had Lucy Massoud on um, the programme before, who is a former firefighter, was part of the Grenfell inquiry. She's a black lesbian who's now a lawyer. And she was on a dating site and saw that there were many um, men who were identifying as trans women who said they were lesbians. And when she complained and said... Well, she, in fact, she didn't even complain in the first instance. Mm -hmm. What she said was... She was interested in, you know, you can tick... Or, I mean, I'm too old to have been on online dating. But anyway, she, she was on it. Never too old, you. Yeah, no, it's true, actually. <laughs> but anyway, she was on this site and she was asked what her preferences were. And, of course, it's love going to the cinema, like going for walks in the countryside. And she said, actually like um, female only. Yes, same-sex yeah. attracted. Same-sex attracted. Yeah. And she was kicked off the dating site for that. And so... For lesbians, we're very, very clear that lesbians are female and that we have, very nicely of course, rejected sexual relationships and romantic relationships with men and that we should be able to have our own identity that is a proud identity where we don't have to apologise to people for it and we don't have to pretend that we're just making do with women because we couldn't find the right man. All of those old tropes are coming back to haunt us now and that's why we need research, advocacy and we need some proper statistics about how many lesbians there are, how many have children, what's happening when we divorce, is there any violence within our own relationships and what issues do we have to face in the workplace, and, and for pe example? People watching will be astonished and they almost won't believe the idea of a lesbian being kicked off a lesbian dating site for being a lesbian <laughs> sounds so ridiculous, but there is this uh, new kind of shame, shaming people who are attracted exclusively mm. to members of their own sex. I yes. spoke to Dennis Kavanagh of the Gay Men's Network who said that there have been similar experiences with men. This is a, a new thing that, that you, you're going to have to deal with, but you will get flack from people saying you're being bigoted or something like this. See, we used to have flack back in the 70s and 80s from very vicious anti-lesbian bigots who would say, you know, you should be locked up. You can't be near our children. There's something wrong with you. You're perverted. And I came through all of that as a feminist, as a lesbian. I got through that with my sisters. I got through that with some help from those gay men that understood. And we went through all of those pain barriers. And here we are today being told that it's bigoted to speak out on behalf of a particular group, which is lesbians. And I refuse to accept that because we're not taking anything away from anyone else. What we're saying is our needs have been ignored for a long time, that we need proper research on our lives, on our opportunities, 
on the challenges that we face. And we are not saying to other people that they don't have a right to do exactly the same. But we are the forgotten letter in the long list of LG blah, blah, blah. Well, uh, we don't have any time left, but could you just quickly let us know where we can find out more information about the Lesbian Project? Yes, we have a website, and it's project underscore lesbian, and you'll find us... Um, on Twitter, and you'll find us if you search Google for the website, I'm sure. And, of course, you can have a look and see if um, Kathleen Stock and I have tweeted anything from the website account. I'm sure you can find us easily. Fantastic. Judy Bindle, thanks very much for joining me. Thank